Hello and welcome to this first video of the FP2 chapter, Inequalities. On the screen, some key ideas that we need to review that are used in this chapter from your GCSE work. Pause the video now, give these a go if you've got time. First one, we've got 3x less than 7x plus 8. Two ways you might approach this, you might put the 8 over here for a minus 8 and then have 4x over here, divide by 4 you get x must be greater than minus 2. Or you might like your x's on the left and say minus 4x less than 8 divided by minus 4, x is less than minus 2. But here we've got two contradictory answers. I've done something wrong. This can't happen. x is either greater than minus 2 or it's less than minus 2. So this is the first key thing that you need to remember from your inequalities work, the golden rule that if you multiply or divide by a negative number, which I did here when I divided by minus 4, you must change the inequality symbol. So my mistake is that that needs to change. The second key thing is solving quadratic inequalities. Don't divide by the x here, it might be a 0. Factorize instead and get two critical values that relate to the equation this. Now if you solve that you get 0 and minus 4 and while this is not an equation to be solved these two values are the critical values of where this will cross the x-axis. So I can sketch this graph knowing that it goes through minus 4 and 0 and it's a positive quadratic so it looks like this. And here I get three regions. I get the region where x is less than minus 4, between minus 4 and 0, and greater than 0. The question is which of those regions gives this less than 0. In this case, it is this region here, between minus 4 and 0. So that is my solution. So two key things to keep in mind here as we go through this chapter. What we've got in this chapter is solving inequalities involving algebraic fractions, which we'll do in this video, and then by sketching graphs, and then looking at inequalities that involve a modulus, and we'll use the sketching graph method to solve those. Here we go for algebraic fractions. The key thing here is that you've got to be aware of what we just said in the starter. If you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must flip the inequality but if you're multiplying by a variable, you don't know if it's a negative number or not. So if you're trying to clear fractions by multiplying by the denominator, and it's an x or an expression with x, that's a problem. To avoid the problem, we multiply both sides by a squared expression, because we know anything squared must be positive, so we don't need to change the inequality. And often that will be the denominator squared. So for example, if you've got something like this, and you might immediately go, oh, 9 must be less than x, that's a problem because we don't know if x is positive or negative. In a variable sense, we have to allow for it being both, which we can't do. So I can't do that. Instead, what I can do is take this expression in the denominator, square it, and multiply both sides by that. So if I multiply by x squared, that's okay because I know that must be positive regardless of what x is. And on the left I get 9x, and on the right I get x squared. Then comes our quadratic, solving x squared minus 9x. Factorize that to get the critical values. Critical values here are 0 and 9, so I can sketch my graph. 9, 0, and I can see it's a positive quadratic. So it looks something like this. Terrible drawing, but good enough for our needs. When is this thing greater than zero? Well, between our three regions here, here, and here, it's greater than zero in this region, where x is less than zero. And it's greater than zero when x is greater than nine. Now, the second thing to be aware of here is that this graph is this inequality not a graph of this function and this function. So although this inequality has the same solution set as this, the same critical values, that's why it's useful, 
because we're solving this by using this, just be aware that it's not going to give you the same graph. If you were to sketch this, the 9 over x would look something kind of like this, and y equals 1 would look something like this, and where those two cross would happen to be the same value as this. And over here, there's an asymptote on the purple graph, which is why, although it's not an intercept, this is a key point to decide whether this is greater or less than 1. So just be aware that the graph that you have for the final inequality is going to be different to the graphs of the functions in the original inequality, even though the critical values and therefore the solution intervals are the same. A couple of examples, then one final note and a final example. Here we've got 1 over x greater than 2x. Take the denominator, square it, put it on both sides. So on the left it cancels once, and on the right we get a cubic. Rearrange and factorise, which gives us 2x squared minus 1. Find the critical values. If that were an equation, we would have this and a 1 over 2 square, square rooted root 2 over 2 plus or minus. So that gives me three critical values. I can now draw a sketch of the graph. We've got minus root 2 over 2 0 root 2 over 2. And here we've got four intervals to look at. This one, this one, this one, and this one. I know how to sketch a cubic graph though. This is a positive cubic, so it looks something like this. And I've got the three points where it intersects the axis. So roughly speaking, it'll be something like this. And the question is, when is this less than 0? It's less than 0 in the interval x is less than minus root 2 over 2, and between 0 and root 2 over 2, here and here. Next example, use algebra to solve this, where x is not equal to 3. So it's the same idea, just a little bit more involved. We've got x plus 3 in the denominator, and we want to get rid of that. And we do that by taking this full expression, squaring it, multiplying it on both sides. So we've got x squared, and there's an x plus 3. One of them stays there, the other one cancels with the denominator. But on this side, we've got x plus 3 squared. Now, you might normally expand this out to collect all your terms to then factorize. But in this situation, you're going to get the same sort of thing happening each time. It's better not to expand yet, because you will always have one common factor between the two sides. So move it, factorize, and then deal with what you've got left. And that's a good standard approach in these questions. So we've got this minus this so instead of expanding it all into a cubic, take out the common factor x plus 3 first, and then deal with the quadratic that you've got left. And in this case, it is not actually a quadratic, because we get x squared with a minus, so the x squareds will cancel. So we've still got the x plus 3, and in here we're going to get minus 2x plus 3. So the critical value is minus 3 and 3 over 2, which lets me draw this quadratic. Minus 3 there, 3 over 2 here, and I can see if I were to expand this out that that would be a negative quadratic, so it looks like this. And again we've got three regions, this one, this one, and this one. When is this graph greater than 0? It's greater than 0 in this middle region, so my solution is this, to the original inequality. Now we have one final note before the last example, and that is if you're not dealing with strict inequalities, but with one of these two inequalities, then you're including the critical values in the solution interval. 
However, these may have been excluded from the original interval, so that the denominator did not equal zero, in which case you've got to be careful to exclude them from your answer as well. Quick example here, if we go back to this one, if this had been this, that would have followed through the working. It wouldn't have changed much. But while this is OK for this inequality, which is what we're really solving here, and that has the same solution interval as this one, it is not quite the same because the original inequality does not allow x to equal minus 3, whereas this with this inequality does. So at the very end, if it's not a strict inequality, you must double check that you're not including in your solution a value that is excluded from the original. So in this case, I would need to change that at the very end to that. And this is worth emphasizing because it's not going to be obvious in your maths. You must check yourself that the answer does not include any values excluded from the original inequality. So that's our final note before our final example. Use algebra to solve this, where x is not equal to 3 and x is not equal to minus 2. So we do the same sort of approach, even though there are two fractions. We're going to square both of these denominators, multiply both sides, so we get x plus 2 squared over here, and x minus 3 squared, but 1 cancels with the denominator. And then the same over here, we've got x plus 2 and x minus 3 squared. And here we see a bit more powerfully the reason why we move, factorize, and then deal with what we've got left, rather than try to expand all this out and collect like terms, because now we've got two common factors. So if I move that all to the left, we get this minus this. And all of that has to be greater than or equal to 0. And then x plus 2, x minus 3 are my two factors, leaving me with x, x plus 2, minus 3, x minus 3. And I can deal with this quite easily. That becomes x squared plus 2x minus 3x is minus x and plus 9. And if you consider this carefully, you will see that this does not factorize. And if you try to put it into the quadratic equation to get the critical values, you'll find square root of a negative because there are no real roots to this. So out of my four possible solutions for the quartic, I only actually have two critical values. These two. That helps me to sketch the graph. It must cross or touch here and here. Now we have three intervals. And I keep saying about these three intervals or four intervals because sometimes you don't know how to sketch the graph you've got. This is a quartic, and you might or you might not know how to sketch a quartic. But you know the three intervals that you need to check. So what you could do instead is just choose any value in this interval from minus 2 all the way down as far as you like. So take an easy one, minus 3, put it in here and see if it works. Then choose a value in this interval, so 0 probably the easiest, put it in here, see if it works. And from 3 up to infinity, choose a value, maybe 4, put it in here, see if it works. And this is called point testing. So you're testing a point in each region to see if that region is true for this inequality and that will tell you which ones are your solution intervals. Of course, if you know how to sketch the graph, you can cut some of that work out. Here, a quartic looks kind of like this. This is a positive quartic if you expand the first term. And I know it must cut the axis here and here, so it starts on the positive side. It goes down, there's a wiggle of some sort in here because it's obviously not a quadratic equation. I don't know exactly where that wiggle is, but it doesn't really matter. All I need to know is it crosses here, it crosses here. So this is greater than or equal to 0 when it is less than minus 2. And when it is greater than 3. But the key point in this example is that I cannot have 
the equal to sign here because although it's fine for this inequality it is not fine for the original x cannot equal 3 because it's in the denominator a 0 if it does same for the minus 2 so both of these values are excluded from my solutions so I can have a strict inequality that's fine but I can't put the equal sign there and these are my final intervals and I hope that is enough for you to have a go at the questions from exercise 1a and maybe I'll see you in the next video for sketching some graphs